workers that go into the harvest field and bring in the harvest. Rise up, I say. Put off your flesh. Put off your sinful acts and deeds. Put off the things that are worldly and draw close to me that I can do all that I desire to do for you.
cannot do in your own strength what you desire to do, what you try to do. For in your portion of the Bible is contained all the things that are going on right now. It has always been in your portion of the Bible, even more so than in the portion that the true Christians have. It's all laid out before you. The hour, the time, the nations that shall stand against you, the calamity, the disaster, it's all there. Why do you try to do it your way? When your way brings destruction, when your way brings disaster, when your way fences you up into the caves of the mountains for three and a half years unable to move, unable to function, unable to win even a small victory, locked up tight until Jesus comes. Look at the handwriting on the wall. Listen, listen, do the things that I have told you.
that you can move forward and do the things that I've called you to do. Look unto me and hear my voice. For as you hear my voice, you will receive my spirit, saith God. And that is the energy and the strength that you can move forward with. And that is how you will overcome the adversary and the enemy in the days ahead. For you have more strength than you realize, saith God. More power than you realize when you trust my word and move according to my spirit. For my anointing destroys every yoke crushes every bondage and brings liberty and light and my love saith the Lord of all the things that I have for them. It is time for them to no longer sit back and watch and see what I'm going to do next, but it is time for them to rise up and begin to go forth and do the things that I speak unto them to do as they are coming to pass, saith the Lord. For truly, it is that hour and it is that time. For truly, I am holding in abundance, in abundance, a flood wants to receive from me, saith the Lord. For truly I am not holding back from my people, for it is them who hold back on me. For I have always made it available unto those who are open and willing to receive. Who is open? Who is willing? Who is ready to answer the call this night, saith the Lord? For truly I desire for you to step up to step up and begin to run with the power, begin to run with the authority, begin to run with the ability that I have given unto you. For truly, I have not just called one or two or three, but I have called many. But many refuse to answer the call, saith the Lord. For they do not have the willing heart. They think that they are not worthy. For truly, I'm the one who says who's worthy or not, saith the Lord, not you. For I have told you to rise up. I have told you to run. I have told you to go forth. So I say unto you to hear the voice of the Lord this night. To heed unto the things that I tell you. For truly, the darkness is only going to begin to spread further and further and to get darker and darker. And you need to be in the place where you can be with me at all times, saith the Lord, that you can hear my voice at all times. For truly, the demon activity has gotten far greater than ever before at any time in history. So you need to be stronger, stronger now than ever before. For truly, I have called you for this day. I have called you for this hour. And I need you to rise up. I need you to take that position. I need you to run with me. I need you to flow with me. I need you to be the one, the one that I have called, the one that I have chosen. For truly you are my chosen people, and I have called you for a great work, and I need you to fulfill that call, saith the Lord.
Reserve. Good times and uh, what else should we say? Good times and good times and fun. Good times in the Lord. Praise God. All right. I don't know. If, I don't believe we have an, uh, anybody singing tonight. Anybody on the roster? on the roster tonight? <laughs> All right, any uh, reports while we're, or testimonies while we're uh, getting ready for song and the preaching of the word tonight? Brother Randy is sharing with us, and uh, praise God, he's ready and raring to go. We thank God for the prophetic word, and uh, he's urging us to part of that army that uh, can go forth and do powerful things. He mentioned tonight that we can't do it in our own strength, and we need to, we need the strength of God, we need His power, His anointing, uh, we can't do it in our own abilities, and uh, drawing close to Him.
that a good thing? <laughs> Praise God. It's a message which I thought I was going to preach at the camp meeting, but you know what? The three messages I thought I was going to preach at the camp meeting, only one of them were the right one. Tonight is one of those other two messages. Glory to God. I can finally preach it. Glory to God. This isn't the title of my message, but I'm going to say it anyway. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. The title of the message is, Go Ahead, Devil, Make My Day. Now, just in case not everybody's ever heard of that line, it was made famous by Clint Eastwood in his movies back in the 70s or early 80s. I never actually ever watched that movie, or any of his movies in a sense, that this came from. But the Lord gave me that saying, and I went to see a little clip about it, and I just could see how the devil was holding these people captive. But I'll get into that when we get into this message. Praise God. Go ahead, devil. Make my day. We know that Jesus Christ has made our day. But the devil comes to try to spoil your day. But he realizes one thing. He ain't spoiling our day. He's giving us an opportunity. Glory. What fun would it be to play a sport if you never had the opportunity to have an opponent? You'd be sitting around doing nothing. Oh, we can run this touchdown. Oh, I'm a victorious player, all-star. Anybody can do that. You can walk. Anybody can walk down the football field. How boring would that be? I'd collect a few million dollars and watch people watch me mosey around with a football. Watch out! Here I come! Look at him go. He doesn't even have to zigzag or nothing. Straight to the end zone. But you know what? It can be that easy, though. With Jesus Christ on your side, because you know what the enemy does? He does this. Parts like the Red Sea. The Lord gave me that uh, description in a word last year about a week from a week earlier than it is right now probably a little bit over a year ago he told me to put off all caffeine and he spoke about I'm trying to think the exact word he used but how I'd be able to run through the enemy's lines and I pictured a football player when they're face to face like this and he said, you'll break through the enemy's lines. And once you're through, guess what? There ain't nothing stopping you. You're going straight to the end zone. And the people are going to look at you and say, we got to get them. Not when you got Jesus jets on. Amen. Glory to God. But by now... We all know how the devil comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. Amen? So we know that any tactic that he tries to apply to your life, no matter how good it may seem, is only to do one of those three things. The only problem now for him is the fact that Jesus Christ came and died and rose again and totally stripped him of all of his authority and gave it back to us, his church. And it is now set on the right hand of God on the throne. Jesus, that is. And guess what that means? He's at the right hand of authority. Amen. Praise God. You know, the Coney Bear translation says in Colossians 2.15, And he disarmed, Jesus disarmed, the principalities and the powers which fought against him. Notice they fought against him. And put them to open shame. To put something to open shame means you strip it naked. It's nude. Leading them captive. And his triumph, which he won 
in Christ. Notice that he's leading them captive. I picture this. They're shackled feet. And he's leading them on. They're butt naked. They have no armor on. Totally defeated. And Jesus is sitting there with all the authority. Leading them on. And the people are shouting and cheering. Woo! You hear the church say, Woo, we're set free! And it says in 2 Corinthians 2, 14 to 16 in Coney Bear, But thanks be unto God who leads me on from place to place in the train of his triumph. You know, I picture the parade to celebrate his victory over the enemies of Christ. You know, we're celebrating Jesus Christ's victory every time we go to come against the devil and his cohorts and his, his devices. His tactics. It's a celebration time. And celebrate his victory over the enemies of Christ. And by me sends forth the knowledge of him a steam of fragrant incense. We're a steam of fragrant incense throughout the world. Without us, the world stinks. It's full of death and decay and other things. For Christ is the fragrance which I offer up to God. Did God not say in the Old Testament He likes to smell of the fragrance of His burnt offerings? Amen. We're an offering unto the Lord. Amen. The sacrifice of Jesus Christ, the fragrance, is wafting out of us. Just as the bellies of living water are flowing out of us. The river waters. That's the fragrance. That sweet smelling water. And when people drink it, they're renewed. They're recreated. They become a new creation. It destroys the work of the enemy. It floods them out. You know, what Paul is literally saying is this. Christ's fragrance am I unto God, whether among those in the way of salvation, which is us, or among those in the way of perdition. But to these it is an odor of death. But to those of salvation it's an odor of life. Yeah. Who in their right mind would smell a beautiful turkey roasting in the oven? And when it's all prepared, set up there with the stuffing and all the sides, and they're starving, and smell it, and oh, if they don't eat it, they're going to die, they're going to starve to death, but decide to not eat it anyway. They're nuts. Crazy. These people that are on their way to hell are nuts. They can smell it, they can see it, they can almost taste it, but they keep their mouth wired shut. They don't want to partake of it for some reason. It's the old saying, you lead a horse to water, but you can't force him to drink. That's just dumb. Nothing's more dumb than having what you need and refuse to partake of it. It's dumb. That's like passing your gas station if you're not believing God, and you know your tank's on empty, but you say you're going to drive to Florida anyway. I don't want to stop there for gas. That's just dumb. That's what they do. Pretty much. Think about it. You're on your way to hell. Woo! Hey, you can get saved here. Nah! I like the smell of dirty diapers. You ever notice? That flies love garbage. Beals above the Lord of the Flies loves garbage. You won't see him around the sweet fragrance of the Christ Church. He doesn't want anything with that. He wants to enjoy himself in the dump. The life of Beals above the dump. Let's go tear open that bag of trash. See what's in there. Who wants to eat this rotten turkey sandwich with me? Well, I'm telling you right now, it's stupidity 
when someone refuses Christ Jesus. But back on to this topic about go ahead, devil, make my day. Do you actually realize they have a dictionary that has that same exact phrase in it, except devil excluded, of course. In the Urban Dictionary, it defines this saying as, the speaker would be very happy if you continue on with your actions or behavior because he, she could react in a manner that would be extremely pleasurable to them. Amen. Go ahead, devil. Make my day. See what my Jesus can do. Amen. No sense having a real fast car if no one ever wants to challenge you. Go ahead. Make my day. Blow those doors off. Blow the car away. Blow the devil away. That dirty Harry blew a few things away. <laughs> Glory to God. We're here to blow things away. Amen. We're not here to cause peace. Remember the sermon? Blessed be the troublemakers. We're here to raise hell. R-A-Z-E. Yeah. Destroy hell. We're not here to make it easy on the devil. Well, devil, just don't do that. I don't want to have to come over here and give you a ticket. A ticket. Drop the sword on him. Amen. The Bible says, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. Start taking his body parts away from him. Amen. Cut him off. Amen. Praise God. I'm telling you, don't take it easy on the devil because he ain't going to take it easy on you. And like I said before, don't be fooled when he tells you, you know, just calm down. You're going to turn him off. Because he ain't turned him on. How are you going to turn him off? That's my new favorite saying. That was one of Albert Willis's sayings, by the way. I just thought that was the funniest thing when I was listening to his tapes. Oh, you don't want to turn them off. You ain't turn them on. Amen. You got to turn them on first. Amen. Then worry about turning them off. Well, you ain't going to turn them off. Praise God. You know, it's just a trick of the devil to keep your mouth shut. Well, Dirty Harry which was the main character played by Clint Eastwood, was confident because he had backup. So he asked, what did he have that the enemies didn't have? Smith and Wesson. I'm serious. He had a weapon. The Smith and Wesson Model 29, which is a six-shot double-action revolver chambered for the 44 Magnum cartridge. At the time of its introduction, the Model 29 was the most powerful production handgun in the world. Every other cop in this city is satisfied with 38 or 357, a cop says to him. What do you have to carry that cannon for? You know what, know what he says? Because I hit what I aim at. That's why. Are you hitting what you're aiming at? Then you better pick up the word. Glory to God. Even though he was outnumbered in the natural, he took down all the bad guys that were holding these helpless people captive. Dirty Harry enters through the back door of this coffee shop. And he tells them, put your weapons down. The enemy laughs. <laughs> what? Harry says, well, we're not going to just let you walk out of here. The enemy says, who's we? Harry says, Smith, Wesson, and me. You get that? Amen. Amen. I'm here to tell you, devil, we're not just going to let you walk out of here. Amen. The Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, and I are setting the captives free. Amen. Amen. We have our weapon of choice, Jesus Christ, the Word. Hebrews 4.12 declares, For the word of God is quick and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. There's nothing that this sword can't pierce, can't slice apart. It knows the very thoughts, it knows the intents of your heart. You can't fool it. Jesus Christ knows everything. 
He knows why you give someone five dollars. Is it because you're doing it for Jesus or is it to look good? I gave him five dollars. say how the earth was created or how this was created Jesus Christ created it all Amen. they could take their theories as where they come from is from the city dump Amen. the city dump is where they get all their ideas from unless they're saved and filled with the Holy Ghost I don't want to hear about their theories because my God says that the wisdom of the world is foolishness to God You know, as long as they're sitting in a dunghill, they're not going to come up with anything valuable to offer us. Until they get into God's Word and filled the Holy Ghost and truly saved, they're not going to offer us nothing but a bunch of refined garbage. It's like trying to refurbish a piece of cat manure and trying to sell it as gold. They can polish it up all they want, but it's still cat poop to me. I'm serious. When these scientists start flapping their lips off, you need to get a hose and spray yourself off. Good thing we have our hose, Jesus Christ. He washes us clean. That's why Jesus said we need to wash each other's feet. Because we're walking in a world where people are spewing it out. Everywhere you walk. The world is full of it. And I'm not going to put up with it. I'm not going to agree with them. I'm going to disagree with them. Because I'm a troublemaker. Colossians 1.14 strongly declares through 20. Who in whom we have redemption through his blood, Jesus Christ, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones or dominions or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things. So how far back do these people want to go? Because he was before it all. They might say, well, we're going back before Genesis. Well, good, go back before that. He was before that. Amen. And by him all things consist. I mean, it's, everything's held together because of Jesus Christ. And he is the head of the body, the church. Amen. We have a head, believe it or not. The world doesn't have a head. They're still trying to look for it. I know where it's at. But I'm not going to disclose that. And he is the head of the body of the church who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. We're reconciled. We have right standing with God. We are the righteousness in Christ Jesus. We have authority over the power of the devil. Kingdom authority. He has no authority over us. 
He'll try to lie to you as that demon tried to lie to Pastor. I, I, uh, I'm the one that killed Jesus. You liar. See, Pastor knew the word. He knew that no man takes his life, but Jesus laid it down and he took it up again. That demon didn't have one ounce of any authority in that matter. He's a liar, just like his father, the devil. Just like the scientists are the father, listen to the father's lies, and they're liars because they're the fathers, the liar. I don't care who they are. I don't care who's holding these people captive. They're liars. Your boss says you can't quit this job because you're not going to make it. He's a liar. Amen. Jesus Christ, if he's calling you out of there to go to full-time ministry, he's telling you to do it, and that's it. Don't listen to the devil. You'll be surprised how many demons are in the workplace. I'll tell you what. They hide behind the faces of the people that are working there, and they're usually the ones that are in power, at least in some places. I know Marietta. I don't know. They must hire these people from the local bar because I tell you what, not some of them aren't too bright. Not one bit bright. But I won't get into that topic. Praise God. <laughs> Anyways, hallelujah. Don't listen to them. They're trash knowledge. Well, anyways, God welded himself with his word. You know what? He united himself so strong in the word that they're inseparable. You can't have one without the other. Otherwise, whoever's preaching one without the other is false. But he made himself one with it. He not only is united in one with his word, but he is back of his word. You cannot take him from his word. Genesis 22, 16 through 17 shouts out, By myself have I sworn that in blessing I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heavens and the sands upon the seashore. You know, this is what God promised that back the Abrahamic covenant. Is it any wonder why Abraham had confidence and victory? He had God's word. We have God's word. Hebrews 7.22 tells us, By so much also hath past tense, Jesus became the surety of a better covenant, the covenant we have now. Jesus is the guarantor for every word from Matthew 1.1 1, 1 to Revelation 22.21. All of heaven is back of the Word. The very throne of God is back of the Word. And Jesus and the Father are back of the throne. They are all one in the Word. Complete. Jesus guarantees this to you now. John 14, 12-14 Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do. Because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Notice, it's that the Father may be glorified in the Son. So it's not talking about you asking about some crazy prayer. That's to benefit you, but it's to glorify the Father and the Son. Amen. Raising the dead is glorifying the Father and the Son. Amen. Healing the sick, cleansing the lepers, raising the dead again. Hallelujah, I like that. I just like the term raising the dead. When people think about raising the dead, to them that's like something impossible. Growing a leg seems impossible, but when you say raise the dead, there's something about that. There's just power in that. Because you're bringing life back to where no life is at. But it's to show who has the true authority over death. Who has the last say in death? Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. And then it goes on to say here in 1 John 3, 8, He that committeth sin is of the devil. That's not hard to figure out, right? For the devil sinneth from the beginning. 
For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. You know, we heard that mentioned lots of times during the camp meeting. But that's because it must be a topic that God wants to get a point across to us. That he was manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. We need to start destroying the works of the devil. I know that many of us are. Praise God, we just need to make sure we continue to do it. He never says anywhere in here to stop doing it. The day he takes us out of here. But the works of the devil must be thwarted. Stopped, crushed, annihilated. Zapped, torpedoed, nuked. Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. He's a liar. We need to crush his lies. Praise God again. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Jesus came to set the captives free. Why well, say, go ahead, devil, make my day? How many captives do you want to try to sit, keep to yourself, hold in bondage? And I'm coming to raise hell Amen. with Jesus Christ backing me up. That's our backup. Praise God. Amen. So Jesus came to destroy. Jesus took on all of hell. He didn't just take on one at a time. He took it all on at the same time. Amen. Didn't matter to him. He knew who had the authority. All the demons and Satan himself, they could not stop him from totally annihilating their kingdom. They could not keep him from stealing their keys. It says here in Acts 2, 22 through 39. I don't know if I'm going to read it all. But praise God. It says here, Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God. You notice he was approved of God. Are we approved of God? Amen. Amen. Among you by miracles and wonders and signs can they say that about you can they say that about me a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you as ye yourselves also know you notice that without any miracles or signs or wonders Jesus would have looked just like a normal guy walking the face of the earth just someone that never sinned. Like, oh yeah, he's a good guy. He doesn't ever do anything wrong. But he didn't do anything to show his power, his authority. We wouldn't have the ability to cast out demons if we didn't know Jesus already did it. You get what I'm saying? The devil was in that coffee shop. And when Harry comes in, He's got all the captives in there completely silent, threatening them. They're all quiet. At first, Harry doesn't know anything's really wrong. Until he walks back out, and they turn the closed sign on the door, and he comes back, comes back through the back door, and set those captives free. Jesus came. You get what I'm saying? Then came Jesus. When Jesus comes, He comes with power. He comes with all the power of the throne. And there ain't nothing that can stop Him. That's why we can say, Go ahead, devil, make my day. How much authority do you want me to hey, uh, send down uh, 60 legions, would you? What, you want more? Uh, Father, send down 120 Jesus only said he was going to send 12 because they destroy the whole earth what would all the angels in heaven do to the earth what would they do to the devil dog pile but that's what the devil tries to do to us he tries to overcome us by trying to get us to think we're not who we are in Jesus Christ. He tries to throw this at you, throw that at you. He's throwing multiple pitches all the time. But we need to be swinging and throwing them back. 
Start picking up that sword. Some people need to build their muscles back up because the sword's been hanging down so long. Pick it up. Amen. Work out. Amen. Work out with the Word. Amen. Build your faith up. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Show the devil what you're made of. Amen. I'm made of the Holy Ghost with power. Amen. I'm made by the Holy Ghost, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and God Himself. Amen. I got all three living in me. Amen. We're one in Him like the three musketeers one for one one for all however that saying goes praise God we're one God is someone I want to be a partner with glory to God we're all in the family and we plan to keep it in the family praise God so it's time to get excited glory amen Romans 16, 20 says, And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. Yeah. I like what uh, brother, uh, what's his name there, pastor there that does the armor book. Praise God. Rick Renner, yes. He showed us what the term shortly really means. But it was a military term. For the Romans, they marched shortly. And they had their shoes of peace on, which Paul calls the shoes of peace, with their three-inch hobnails. And he was saying that what God's saying is, march shortly. Doesn't matter if an old lady gets you in your way, you just run her down. Don't stop. The Roman soldiers didn't stop for anybody. So he said, when the devil gets in your way, you just tell him, you better move, boy. Because when we're finished walking through and over the top of him he's just a pile of Limburger cheese stinks glory then the people that want to eat it they can eat it praise God I'll stick with American <laughs> glory God said stick with the American products right amen <laughs> so eat American cheese <laughs> glory but it doesn't matter what the devil or his demons are telling you or threatening you with Jesus is your backup Amen. tell him go ahead devil make my day get excited when the devil tries to move get excited the church needs to rise up and declare go ahead devil make my day Amen. you know it opens up the door to kick his behind out and manifest God's glory it destroys cancer, death, sickness, fear gives peace, Amen. freedom in life. Amen. Get excited. Amen. Get excited. Amen. Put on Jesus Christ. Amen. Get excited. Amen. Put on your game face. Amen. What's your game face look like? Jesus. Amen. Amen. Paul says, put on Jesus Christ. I put him on daily. Get fired up. Set a fire in the enemy's camp. Burn them out. Run them out. The enemy's camps are inside people, believe it or not, and through people. They hide behind faces of men and of names. Cancer, lunatic, mad, schizophrenia, epilepsy, deaf and dumb, unclean, anger, bipolar, depression. The list goes on. Set a fire and burn them out. Set them free. Run them down in Jesus' name. Amen. You got the Holy Ghost locomotive Amen. behind you. Run them down. Amen. Glory. Get suited up as Paul commands us in Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. He says, finally, my brethren, what this means is, if you didn't get anything else, get this. Put on the armor of God. the most important thing that you need be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil the tactics of the devil for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world 
against spiritual wickedness in high places. You notice it's not John or Paul or Susie that we're at war with. It's what's behind it. Who's operating behind the face? Behind the mask? Who is that man behind the mask? The devil. He's a coward. Cowards hide themselves. He feels like he's all safe and secure because he's got a man's face on or a woman's face on or a different name. But we all know that all things that are not good are of him. Amen. And he's behind it all. Amen. There's one thing that the devil doesn't like and that's to be found out. He gets embarrassed. He doesn't like to get scolded in front of all of his cohorts. You know how embarrassing that is? Devil, I told you to get out! Amen. His demons sit and look at him and laugh at him. And he gets embarrassed. He doesn't like being embarrassed. He wanted to have the throne higher than God's. He's humiliated when he gets told off by, you know, someone created by a bunch of dirt. You know, he was this great, big, anointed cherub. Second to God in power. But because of the evilness in his heart, he was cast out. And he took all of his wisdom that he had, but it was turned negative. So all the wisdom he had from God is now against God. And that's the wisdom that the unsaved person has. They have not the wisdom of God. But it's time to get suited up. It's time to take back what the devil stole from you. It's time to take it all back. Because the wealth of the heathen is ours. The glory belongs to God. Not to the devil. The devil's trying to rob the glory. He's trying to make the church look evil. Which is kind of a coincidence, you know. He's the kingdom of darkness, and yet he tries to make God's church look like that's where the problems are at. But the Bible says that he comes as an angel of light. He's a wolf in sheep's clothing. That's what the demons do. They put on the cloak of the person. I go to church, yeah. Can I pray for you? There's 50 demons. Let me go pray for you. You know, they're always the ones that want to go pray all the time. Let me lay hands on you. They're out there trying to spoil the church. They're out there in the world now, on television. Up on their pedestals that they've built themselves. Give me money and I'll do this. Or I, I'm this way, but it's right. I can do it. See, I'm preaching and this is still happening. When's the church going to say enough is enough? When are we going to throw them out of the pulpits? Jesus going to have to do it himself? God? God said he's going to smash their altars personally ain't going to take much one waft of his little pinky many words have come forth about how judgment starts in the father's house those people better either shape up or ship out because they're going to fall down dead that might be the best thing that could happen to them praise God believe it or not Sometimes it's better to die young than to die older and live for the devil longer. <laughs> the more damage you do, the more you're going to be held accountable. But like I said, it's time to get excited. Amen. Praise God. It's time to put off the powers of the world. Amen. It's time to walk in the freedom that Jesus Christ has given us. So we need to take unto us the whole armor of God that we are able to stand against the evil day. What is the evil day? The evil day is any day when you wake up and there's a lying sickness in your house. 
Someone tells you you lost your job. Someone says, you know, a member of your family has cancer. Someone says, you know, so-and-so just died of a heart attack. That's the evil day. The evil day is when the devil tries to lie to you and say, you might as well not go pray for that person because he ain't going to make it. Rise up! Put the enemy under your feet! He's a liar! That's the evil day! The evil day is any day that the devil tries to come against you and threaten you or hold people around you captive. That's when you rise up and say, Go ahead, devil! Make my day! The evil day is a fun day! It's not a day of gloom and doom for the Christian, it's a day of victory! It's a day that you can wield the sword. Raise up the shield of faith. Put your helmet on. Rear your feet. Shod your legs. Put the the belt of truth on. And take the enemy out. What good's a gun if you're not ever expecting to use it to protect your family? What good is the armor of God if you're just going to keep it polished up? Where's the battle marks? Where's the oil on that shield? You know, I spoke before about the shield. How it was made out of leather. And it became brittle unless you applied the oil to it. Are we applying the oil to our shield? Are we? Or when we go into battle, is it going to break in our hands? So it says here, And having done all to stand... Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. You know, it's not saying that the shield of faith is more important than the word, or more important than the sword. But it's saying above all, meaning out in front of all. You put your faith out there. You don't put your shield behind you. You put it out front where you're headed. It clears the path. For the sword, the swing. Glory to God. That says here that ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication for all saints. I like to call that the spear of influence or the spear of intercession. That's the other weapon we have. Prayer and supplication. That's a weapon. That's to take the enemy out from a long distance. You take that spear and you chuck it out there And the devil gets whacked or whoever gets whacked out there that's operating under the devil's influence takes him out from a distance. Where'd that come from? I don't know. We're under attack. (laughs) Amen. Take them out before they even have a chance. They don't even have a chance to get to you. When you're praying and making supplication, you take them out from a long distance away. That's what Jesus is basically warning us about in the prophetic word. Before it even happens, he's given us the ability to pray over it. That that we're ready for when the attack comes, he's already been defeated. He's not here to be able to influence our lives because we've already taken care of it. It's those that are ignoring the warnings that are going to be taken off guard. We've got only two scripture verses left here. Romans 16, 20. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. I want to rephrase that again. It's very important that the Bible's not saying that right now, you know, you're you're not going to have victory. Because people read that word shortly and think, well, it hasn't happened yet. It means a little while. But it's saying, no, it's now. March on him. Trample him down. Glory to God. 
Hebrews 10 19 having therefore brethren boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus that's one of the greatest things we have is to be able to enter into the holiest of holies with the blood of Jesus we don't just cowardly walk in blow the doors down father I'm here and he receives you with open arms he doesn't say, take him away. No. He likes us coming in to visit with him. Because we have that boldness and surety, we can tell the devil, go ahead, devil. Make my day because my daddy's coming. My daddy's here to take you down. It ain't my battle. The battle's the Lord's. My daddy's. But I'm here to cause trouble for you. Amen. When he goes to try to threaten you with something, you say, Here, Daddy. You hide behind God. Takes you up. Here, son, you just sit here for a minute, and I'm going to deal with this problem. What's this you're trying to do? Nothing. Nothing. I didn't think so. Get. His day's coming. His day's coming. His day's coming where he's going to be able to stay in a nice, hot, hot tub. He likes that hot tub. So it's not going to be full of water. It's going to be fire, fire and brimstone. Is that too hot for you? I'm sorry, the thermostat's broke. <laughs> it's stuck on high. Father, I thank you, Lord, for your word. It does not go out and return to you void, but goes forth to do what it was sent to do. For this church is free, and so are the captives. They're free from cancer. They're free from any disease that the devil will try to place on them. They're free from the fear of poverty. Their fear of death. They're set free in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. The cripple shall walk, the lame, the blind will see, and the deaf hear. Because that's what Jesus came to do. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Go ahead, devil. Make my day. Show him the thunder cookie. <laughs> <laughs>